Hello and welcome back to my channel. For these cards, I am using the mini stamp set that is from the new release called Seriously Awesome. I am using Hoppy Easter for the bunny. And I am going to use a toucan and one of the cats from Toucan Do It. The cat I have stamped in this fade out ink from Ink on 3. And then I am going to use this alcohol safe fine liner. This is from Prismacolor, but there are other brands that have alcohol friendly ink. And I am just going to outline the lines that I want to keep. I am going to make this one a tiger, so I don't need the spots. For the bunny, I'm keeping him white. You guys may or may not know which cereal that this one is supposed to mimic. The coloring, just keeping it very simple. And I did adjust one thing, and that is the center of the ears show in this bunny, and they don't on the cereal box that this bunny is on. So, I added pink anyway. I didn't want to leave it white. I thought that would look a little strange. I did mute the color just a little bit, though, with the gray. Now, the bowl, I picked the color based off of what i seen on the boxes, some of the boxes had a purple bowl and some of them had yellow. I picked yellow. There wasn't any real rhyme or reason behind it. And I will show you coloring this spoon off screen, I mean on screen, and then the other two are off screen because it's the exact same thing. Now if you want to pause it here, you can see all the colors that I used for the fruity cereals. I will say I had three color blends in there. That's ridiculous. Like You do not have to do that. You cannot tell that there's three colors in most of those tiny little hearts. So save yourself the trouble. Like I didn't <laughs> use two color blends if you're even going to add some shading. Honestly, they're so tiny you'd probably get away with just doing one color and it would look just fine. Instead of leaving the milk just white, I did bring in an E40 marker just to add a little bit of color. I did leave white spots in it still. Alright, same thing with the this other fruity cereal. All the colors are the exact same as last time. I just put them in a slightly different order. That way both bowls did not look the same. Also, something else I messed up on, which this bowl is supposed to be a glass bowl. So, you can see through it. But when I was coloring my cereal on the actual bowl, I should have spaced it differently because the way I colored it, it looks like the cereal and the milk come straight up to the edge of the bowl on that side, but not the other one. So if you want to do cereal in the clear bowl, I really recommend finding a picture and trying to kind of mimic what the picture looks like because I did not do that. And it was only after I finished and I was editing my video that I realized my mistake. So, lesson learned. Alright, in the bowl I'm coloring with the milk color and then I have a BG color here. This was too light so I grabbed this one. Slightly darker just to help make it look a little bit more glass-like. I don't know if it's really reading as glass, but I tried. On to my bird. This bird doesn't look exactly like the box either. I realized afterwards that the tail feathers on the box, there's three, and they're the colors of the beak. So the yellow, the pink, and the red. But I colored mine blue. Also around the eye would be blue, but I didn't want my whole bird to be blue. So it's slightly different. Now on to my favorite animal of the three is my tiger. Now I did test this twice before I did this one on screen because I wasn't comfortable doing it. And I did a realistic version and one that looked more like the box. And I did not like the more 
stylized cartoon version. So I stuck with the more realistic version. And I will say, when I add the stripes, I had a lot of anxiety about it, even though I had already done a test one and I already knew what it would look like. And, you know, I thought it turned out pretty decent. So I, I don't know what my problem with that was. <laughs> but my stripes are just C8. I didn't add anything like shading into it or anything. He's pretty plain. I mean, as plain as a tiger is going to be. <laughs> I do go back in where I left the little white spots around the eyes. I had made those black lines at the top and it gave him an angry look. And I didn't want him to be angry. So you'll see it later. I do take a white gel pen and I go over those lines. Moving on to my clay shaker bits. For these, I'm using polymer clay. I have mixed colors to get the colors that I have. And for the cereal that will be with the rabbit, I have these little balls and I am just texturing them with a toothbrush. I will say that mine were kind of big, so when I make my um, shaker card with this, I have to use nine layers of Big Mama foam tape. That was kind of ridiculous, and if I did this again, I would definitely make them a little bit smaller, but I wanted them to look like realistic cereal, so I don't know. Next we have the little loop cereal, and I have just taken a ball, and I have smashed it down just a little, added a hole in the center with something, and now I'm just taking the toothbrush, and I am texturing the sides and then the top. You can do the bottom side too, but you have to be careful not to smash out your texture. Another thing is if you have kneaded the clay a lot or whatever and it's a little bit soft, you might want to let it rest to the side for a few minutes to come back to room temperature so that you don't smush the shape that you made a little too much. I was having issues with that with a couple of mine because all my colors are not pre-packaged colors. I mixed different colors together. So like this green, I have white, green, and yellow. For the blue, I have white, blue, and a little bit of green. Alright, now here is my Frosted Flake. And I have just taken this little ball of clay. I've smashed it down a little bit. And now I'm taking my Pokey Tool and I'm going around the edges to make texture. Because if you look at the different flake cereals, they're not smooth around the edges. Out of the three cereals that I make, this is the more time consuming, a little bit more difficult one. Alright, taking this little crunched up ball of foil and I'm adding texture to the top. I'll do the same with my toothbrush and then I will even add some little holes, kind of like popped bubbles on the surface with my pokey tool. Next, I'm going to use my chalk pastels. I have a brown and a white and I have scraped the top to make a dust. And I'm going to brush on some of the brown for a little toasted look. And then I'm going to brush on some white to make it look like it's frosted. After all that was done, I just baked according to package directions and waited for them to cool off. Now I'm cutting all my panels the exact same. I have this scallop circle and the scalloped rectangle. And... Next, I am going to ink blend till my panels will be red, and for that I am using my Candied Apple Distress Oxide. I am also going to tape off the edges to leave a white border, and I am making a mask to cover the little scallop part of the circle so that those will be left white. 
The ink blending is kept very simple. I'm just covering the whole thing with red. In the end, I have two red panels and one blue panel. To assemble my shakers, it's the exact same as you normally do. I have my little acetate window, I am adhering it down to my panel, and now I'm going to take foam tape. Now depending on how thick your shaker bits are will determine how much foam tape you use. For the round cereal I used 9 <laughs> layers of foam tape, it was ridiculous. For this I only used 2, these will be the flakes, it's pretty thin. And I don't know, I might have used six for the little loop cereal. So, yeah, it gets kind of ridiculous. Keep your shaker bits thickness in mind when you're making them. So I added my shaker bits in. Now I'm removing the backing paper, and I will attach the card panel to the back, which apparently I did not film that. Now I'm just trying to figure out my spacing for my die cut word. And then I did not like the heat embossed letters on this card, so I just covered over it with little labels. The words were heat embossed with white. And now I'm attaching my little critter and my bowl of cereal down, and my card is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I would love to see if you guys create your own little cereal shaker cards. They were so fun to make. It's a little time consuming when you're trying to do three different ones. If you guys do recreate one of these cards or make your own, I'd love to see what you create. Please tag me on Instagram. The link will be in the description box below. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye!